Welcome to the explainer. So if you're an engineering student, I don't need to tell you about the struggle, right? We're talking heavy textbooks, endless problem sets, and diagrams that look like they're from another planet. The big question we're tackling is this. For 2026, can an iPad actually be the secret weapon you need to lighten that load and, you know, streamline your entire student life? So let's get right into it. Is an iPad just another expensive gadget that's going to end up being a Netflix machine? Or could it actually be a game changer for your studies? Well, the truth is, it really comes down to two things. How you plan on using it, and, this is the big one, which model you end up picking. Now, let's be super clear about something. An iPad is not a replacement for your heavy-duty engineering laptop. You're still going to need that for your big software. But where it really shines is in the day-to-day -day stuff. I'm talking about scribbling down complex formulas without a million pieces of paper, marking up lecture slides right as the professor is talking, or quickly sketching out a circuit diagram. It's like this perfect digital multi-tool that can seriously lighten your backpack and just make your whole workflow so much smoother. Okay, so how do you pick the right one? It's easy to get lost in all the specs and marketing. So before we even touch the different models, let's build a foundation. Let's figure out what really matters for an engineering student. These are the things that are gonna make a real difference in your day to day. So as we check out the lineup, I want you to have this checklist in your head. First, you've got performance. You need something that won't choke when you have your notes, a textbook, and a calculator app all open at once. Next, Apple Pencil support. Honestly, this is a deal breaker. Without it, you're missing half the point. Then there's screen size. Trust me, when you're staring at complex schematics, bigger is definitely better. Storage is huge too. Engineering files aren't small and they add up fast. Of course, battery life. It has to last you from your 8 a.m. lecture all the way through a late night study session. And finally, keyboard support. For typing up those long lab reports, you're gonna want a proper keyboard. Okay, it's time for the main event. Let's meet the 2026 lineup. But we're not just gonna talk about specs. We're gonna frame each one by asking a simple question. Who is this for? Let's find your perfect match. And first up is the absolute powerhouse of the group the iPad Pro, rocking the new M5 chip. This thing is for the student who wants zero compromises. We're talking desktop-level performance packed into a tablet. It's for someone who wants a device that's not just for now, but is completely future-proof, lasting you all the way through your degree and beyond. And here's the classic trade-off, right? On one hand, you get insane speed and that gorgeous OLED screen, which is just incredible for technical drawings. But on the other hand, that power comes with a pretty hefty price tag. For a lot of students, it might be like buying a sports car just to drive to the grocery store. A bit overkill if all you're doing is taking notes. Okay, next up is the iPad Air with the M3 chip. And let me just say it, for most of you, this is probably the one. It hits that absolute sweet spot, that perfect balance between power and price. I mean, the iPad Air has more than enough muscle for pretty much everything you'll throw at it. Diagrams, multitasking, massive textbooks, it won't even break a sweat. And you get all that without the pro's wallet-busting price. It's just the smart, practical, no-brainer choice for most engineering students. But hey, what if the budget is tight? I get it. That's where the standard 11-inch iPad comes in. This is your go-to if you need something that's reliable, gets the job done, and doesn't require you to, well, sell a kidney. And this model is proof that you don't need the latest and greatest chip for your core tasks. For taking notes and reading PDFs, it's absolutely fantastic. The only things to keep in mind are that it's not going to be as zippy with really demanding apps. And that base storage model, yeah, you could fill that up pretty quick. All right, last but not least, we've got a bit of a wild card, the iPad mini. Think of it as a pocket rocket. It has a seriously powerful A17 Pro chip crammed into this super small body. It's really for the student who is always, always on the move. So, here's the deal with the Mini. It's super powerful for its size, no doubt. But that small screen, it's a real drawback when you're trying to look at a detailed diagram or multitask with split screen. So my take, it's an amazing secondary device for reading on the go or jotting down quick notes, but it's probably not gonna be your primary study tool. Okay, so there you have it the Powerhouse Pro, the All-Rounder Air, the budget-friendly standard iPad, and the portable mini. Now, let's pull all this information together. I'm gonna to walk you through a super simple process to help you land on the perfect choice with total confidence. This chart just lays it all out nice and simple. You can see everything side by side, the screen sizes, the chips inside, the pencil it supports, but the most important column is best for. Seriously, just find the description that sounds most like you and you're pretty much halfway to making your decision. 
And to make it even easier, let's boil it down to just three steps. Step one, think about your real, honest-to-goodness workload. Are you mostly a note-taker or are you going to be messing with complex 3D models? Step two, take that answer and match it to one of the iPads on the chart we just saw. And step three, lock in your storage and grab the accessories that'll complete your setup. It's that simple. Okay, let's talk about storage for a second, because this is important. That 128 gigabyte option, it's tempting, I know, but trust me, it fills up way faster than you think. For pretty much every engineering student, 256 gigs is the sweet spot. That's enough room for all your textbooks, your lecture notes, and, this is the key part, your massive project files. We're talking about those huge CAD files or simulation data that can be gigabytes each. You really want that extra breathing room so you're not constantly fighting with your storage. All right, we're almost there. But remember, an iPad by itself is just a cool piece of glass. The accessories, that's what turns it from a tablet into a full-blown engineering toolkit. So what do you need? Well, the Apple Pencil Pro is completely non-negotiable. It's the whole reason this works so well for notes and diagrams. A keyboard is a very close second, especially for lab reports. And seriously, do yourself a favor and get a good protective case. Campus life is rough, and you'll thank me later. Okay, let's wrap this up with a final recommendation. If you have the cash and you want the absolute best of the best, the iPad Pro is an absolute beast. If you're watching every penny, the standard iPad is an amazing value. But for the vast majority of engineering students, the smartest, most logical, all-around choice is the iPad Air. It's the one... Look, at the end of the day, this isn't just about buying a new gadget. It's an investment in a tool that can genuinely help you succeed. So when you're making that final call, just think about your classes, your budget, and ask yourself one simple question. When your grades are on the line, which one of these tools are you going to trust?